The following presentation is brought to you through the paid memberships of NotaryStars.com, the only notary training platform and resource library with over 150 hours of training on every loan product under the sun. Together with our sister website, OnlineNotariesPublic.com, which focuses on notaries who are pioneering in remote online notary, we strive to give you a safe place to ask questions, get answers, gain confidence in your notary career, and achieve success without overfabricating the truths about our industry. If you would like to support us, please consider liking this video, subscribing to our channel, sharing this video with a colleague, or becoming a member and trusting us to help you achieve the level of success you desire. Well, hello, everybody. Welcome to Waddle Week, day after Thanksgiving. <laughs> It'll take us a week to get rid of all of that extra food we ate. Welcome to MGM. Monday General Mentorship is brought to you by NotaryStars.com. Thanks so much for spending time with us tonight. Today's Monday, December, or November, not December yet, <clears throat> November 27th, 2023, and my name is Beth Hathoot. I'm an instructor for Notary Stars, and I have with me my two fabulous co-hosts, Mr. Ronnie Nickel, the founder and co-owner of Notary Stars, Unlimited Ink Notary, and Online Notaries Public, and of course, Mr. William Bumfrey, aka Mr. Bill our expert remote online notary instructor here at Notary Stars. This public training session is held every Monday, except for holidays, 5 p.m. PST, 8 p.m. Eastern. And it's all about you guys, the nationwide notary signing agent community. So you need to know that this type of session works best if you can do a couple of things. First, this session is all about you and what's on your mind. What unanswered questions do you have? Or would you like to share a win or a tip with your community? Your participation is so appreciated. So at any time during the session, um, you can use the raise hand feature at the bottom of your screen to get into queue to ask questions or share something with all of us. Second, it would be super helpful if you could turn on your cameras. If you aren't driving, that is. It just makes it so much easier to interact with all of you when we can see your faces. A um, couple of quick announcements before we get started. And I think Mr. Ronnie already posted, we want to encourage you all to follow us on social media. So TikTok, YouTube, Facebook, and I think it's already posted those uh, links in the chat for you. And don't forget, we have that jot form available for you to pre-ask your questions. And hopefully he'll post that link in there too. You can just kind of hang on to that link. Anytime you think of a question, pop it into that jot form and we'll answer your question live on the next general mentorship. That's all I have for tonight, Mr. Ronnie. Are you ready to kick off this meeting? Absolutely. Uh, welcome back, everybody. I hope you had a wonderful Thanksgiving holiday. I spent the holiday doing much of nothing, um, which I promised my students on Wednesday when we were leaving that I would do. Um, I don't have any announcements myself other than, I mean, you guys have gotten the emails, and if you haven't, you need to subscribe to our list, but today is the last day. Black Friday kind of extends into Cyber Monday. We do have a special running at Notary Stars. Um, I think we've driven it in what we offer. We offer signing agent training on every loan product under the sun, every signature variance, loan support, no matter who you're working with. And uh, if you're at the marketing level, we cover, there's nothing that I don't cover under the roof. You can go right to that first tab on the marketing journey and see everything that I've taught about. And now's a perfect time to join because I'm refilming everything I've ever done before uh, to start everybody that's coming into the course off fresh and new. And because, uh, technology and the internet changes pretty much yearly, it's about time that that gets re-recorded and make sure that we're all up to date in the class. So we do have that Cyber Monday sale. If you just go to notarystars.com, scroll down the page, you'll see that Cyber Monday sale. Uh, make sure that if you want to uh, join in on that, that's a, a wonderful thing. And I just want to say this, um, so far I've taught my SEO course to, it's 500 that have bought the course independently and 198 marketing students. 
um, hopefully this last Friday when I taught the class for 40 more people that I didn't teach someone in your area because they will be dominating the internet searches in your area. So if you have a website and you want to dominate or you want to be competitive, I am creeping up in numbers with how many people have taken that course. And I assure you, no one is going to teach you what I teach you in that course. Um, and it's on sale right now for more than 50% off, which is $75 and you get all my previous sessions for just the SEO course. Uh, with that said, Ms. Beth, let's get started with the questions from for today. All righty. First one up on Jot Form says, hi there. I'm a new notary. The Arizona Secretary of State approved me for Ron. I sent an email asking if every time I choose a new service, will it require another request? So I think she's saying every time she chooses a new platform, does it require another uh, application to the Secretary of State? I've not received an answer and thought I should ask here. By the way, Sue Hope sends love. <laughs> that was from Siobhan Hawkins. So this might be in Bill's <clears throat> well, wheelhouse, <clears throat> and maybe not. It's kind of a generic question. But in short, the Arizona Secretary of State does require you to register each platform that you're going to be performing RON services for. So each and every one of them. And there's two, um, two categories, pure RON and uh, in-person electronic notarization platforms. So yes, the next question though, Ronnie, I think is something Bill could chime in on. Um, you are on mute. I think Bill and I would both have a lot to say on, on this uh, next question here. Yep. It, the, why would you, why would I need to sign up with more than one Ron platform? Uh, Bill, why don't you start out and let's see if I have anything to add on to it. Uh, sure. <laughs> I, I mean, you, you almost, if you're going to make it a full-time gig, you really have to have more than one platform. There's so many reasons as far as you never know when this site will go down and this one is still up. Uh, you can have issues where uh, there's a lot of specifics within signings. When, when you're just doing, you know, like one or two signers, those platforms, you know, most of them will accommodate all of that. But once you get to the point where you have to have five signers in five locations, or you have to have two signers grouped together on this camera over here and one on this camera and two on this camera, there's certain elements that you can't do uh, on, on every single platform. They all have, they all accomplish the same end goal, you're going to get uh, done what you need to get done if you successfully complete the RON, but they each have their own little features that certain sites do better than other sites. So, I, I mean, I absolutely wouldn't be able to live without multiple platforms just because I have so many unique <laughs> things that happen. So I had just for an example, I had a signing that I did two weeks ago and it had eight different signers on eight different complete document sets with two witnesses. They were all over the country. <laughs> there is no way <laughs> I could have effectively put that through certain platforms, but there are other platforms that work really well with that. Um, Ronnie, I don't know if you wanted to add anything to that. I probably will think of other stuff as you start mentioning things. Absolutely. I do have um, something to add to that. And I think that, um, I think the biggest thing is more business. So at Unlimited Inc, we have lots of clients. Sometimes when they come in, they say, we need it to be done on Notarize. Sometimes we get an order and it says it can be done on Notary Cam, Notarize, or Blue Notary. Sometimes it says it can be done on any platform. Sometimes it says it can be done on Cyberize or Blue Notary, depending on who the underwriters have approved. And Here's the thing, guys, you don't have to immediately sign up and start paying for these platforms. You can get approved for them with your secretary of state so that you can pivot as you grow your notary business. So in Arizona, I last time I applied, I, I put everyone that could fit on the line so that and I'm only really using one at the moment. Well, two. Um, 
And here's the thing, you know, if it's free and they bring you business, like clear sign, you definitely want to be there because if you're on with Amrock, they're going to send you business. Or if you're using ServiceLink, I think ServiceLink uses clear sign as well. Um, you, you're going to get business for doing it. Now, you should have one for general notary work that you can do um, or any business that you bring in from an attorney or those things. They generally don't have an underwriter to dictating to them which platform that can be used. So you at least lead all the free ones that can bring you business, whether it be notarized or, uh, you know, uh, um, uh, clear sign or anything that can give you business. Sure. Be on those. Get your practice as a raw notary. Get your scripts down. And then add in one more that you can use at your own free will to bring that for business that you bring in and then add them as you come. But go ahead and get approved for them so that you're not waiting for your secretary of state to approve you for a wrong platform. When you do get that client walking through the door that says, hey, we can use you, but we only can do notarize or we can only do blue notary. You don't want to wait around for those platforms uh, to uh to, you don't want to wait around so that your platform to, to go chasing a platform. You want to be able to just pull the trigger, buy it, and let's go. We have a couple of hands raised, Mr. Ronnie. I think maybe Miss Carol's arm's getting tired. So yes, let's let's go for those questions up in the gallery. Miss Carol, do you want to unmute and ask your question? There. Is that better? Yes, ma'am. Oh, sorry, I was swearing at the <laughs> computer. <laughs> Listen, I have a question I don't understand. Okay, I'm paying $59.95. Now, you just said $75 for the year. So, I'm confused. No, it's not $75 for the year. It's only I didn't think that. It no. <laughs> No, 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 no. Um, I would be broke if I charged seventy five dollars <laughs> for the year. Um, so the the seventy five dollars is for the Black Friday and Cyber Monday sale, just on the SEO course, not the rest of the course that goes along with it. Okay, so I'm getting the whole thing. You have got the whole shebang. Whole kabang. That's what I wanted to make sure. I'm going to be missing a couple of Fridays. So I'll have to watch reruns. There's stuff going on, but um, I'm with you, baby. All, All right. right. I just wanted to make sure I didn't want to, you know, screw it up. No, nope. <laughs> we'll take care of you, Miss Carol. I, I, you, Thank you, darling. You guys know I'll always take care of you and do right. Yes, right. I do know you will. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Yep. Our next question is up from, let's go ahead and get another one raised because we got a queue of live people here uh, with Kirsten. Uh, Kirsten, did you have something that you wanted to ask? Yeah, I have a question regarding um, witnesses. Uh, can a credible witness also be a witness on the power of attorney? I'm gonna Thank wait. you. That says. <laughs> Um, <clears throat> well, definitely if they qualify on the power of attorney, um, I would think that they could also be the credible witness. There's not a real conflict there. When you, when you think about powers of attorney, it's going to be limited anyway. You know, it can't be a spouse. It can't be this. It has to be somebody over the age of 18, yada, yada, yada. They have their own set of rules when it comes to who can be the signature witness. Um, and if they can also identify the signer, I would think that would be okay in my book. I would allow that, yeah. And then okay. I'll just put my two cents on it. We get this a lot for um, the Florida files for the notary acts as one witness, and then they have to get a witness, but then they don't have an ID. So they do a credible witness. Um, so we do it a lot. Now, I know you're asking specifically for power of attorney, but we've never ran into issues where the person couldn't be the credible witness and the witness on the document at the same time, because they're acting in two different capacities there. They're witnessing the document signature, and they're also vouching for the person. There's no statute that says that they can't do that. And always, always, always to end this conversation with the right way to do it, 
always defer to your receiving party. And if you don't have a receiving party, it's just direct work. You can, you can, if you, if there's no law against it, so, you know, you can proceed. Okay, thank you. Thank hmm. you. I think Miss Laura Hinton has her hand up too. Uh, Laura, do you want to go ahead and unmute and ask your question? Sure. Um, I want to go back to the Ron that we were talking about with Bill earlier. I have a question about not just the platforms, but the signing services or whoever he might get all of his jobs from. I don't think that they're all from Unlimited Inc. Are they? <laughs> I mean, he's. I've heard that he makes a pretty good living doing Ron work. So I'm wondering where he might be getting all of his work from if it's not all from an limited ink notary. I'm sorry, who are you, who are you referencing? I'm sorry, I'm talking about Bill. I'm sorry, I meant to oh. say Bill. <laughs> if I didn't say Bill, I meant to say Bill. <laughs> well, yeah, Bill can answer that for you. <laughs> yeah, so uh, for me, I okay, now I have to say I had a unique advantage I was a remote notary in July of 2019, pre-pandemic. Then when the pandemic happened by March of 2020, I was already established. So I kind of had a, a, a leg up on that one. Um, but I do do a lot with, uh, most of my escrow stuff is direct. It's things that I've spoken uh, with the escrows directly and gotten the work from them directly. I also work um with attorneys uh i do do a little bit of general i don't really put myself out there for a ton of general more than anything it's it's because i think uh, that uh, ronnie has talked about it before I i've kind of become a diva as far as i don't want to spend a lot of time on a single notarization because if i'm only going to get 25 dollars which is what i can charge in my state and then i have to pay at least 10 to the signing platform and i have to pay another 11 or, or another dollar or two to square to process the credit card payment it's a lot of times not worth my time to do it for just 12 dollars because it takes just as much work as <laughs> say doing like getting together a whole seller package or something right. like that so I don't uh, do signing services too much. I honestly, I mean, I don't do a ton for Ronnie. I, I just because I don't really have a lot of time. I um, actually just looked it up, Bill, and you have done seven orders from us for us from January first to to today. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> so I don't do very that's many. Not a lot. <laughs> okay. Yeah, okay. I, I want to so, add. I want to add on on this too, Bill. But and you know, I do call you a deep notary sometimes because. And it, it's rightfully so because Bill has made his way um, and gone and gotten his own clients. Uh, so I just want to say, you know, I, I do use that term diva notary, but it's also rightfully so. Once you get to a certain place like Bill's gotten to, you can kind of command and say, like, I can't take the lower file fees because I'm going to not be able to take the higher file fees. He does it in a kind way, but I joke with him behind the scenes calling him a diva notary. Okay. I don't that's mind. Kind of what you can I call wanted. me a diva. That's yeah. <laughs> well, I just didn't know how you might, you know, if you were getting new people, how you were contacting the either the groups or the individuals or how you were getting any work. But like you said, you kind of had a leg in from when the uh, COVID hit and all that stuff. So I was just trying it, to figure out how I might be able to get some more raw and work. And, and honestly, the, the the biggest one of all of those is word of mouth. Uh, you know, even if you do, if you have one escrow client that you do a great job for, they will tell every escrow officer knows every other escrow officer. Okay. <laughs> they all talk to each other. And okay. so I get a lot of, I just had one a little bit ago that I've got to do at six o'clock that's in China. And she's like, Hey, oh. I'm in a bind. I have to do one in China this evening at six o'clock. I know that this girl in the office has used you before. And so a lot of it is just that it's a okay. word of mouth that you do it right for one person. And the next person kind of falls in line. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. And Miss Laura, I just want to put in a, a couple of words on, on this before we move on to Miss Anita's question. This is not just about Ron. This is about all notaries that are on this call or are going to watch this replay. If you don't go tell people about your business, they're not going to know you're there. You should not be bound to signing services. I have plenty of notary stars that work with Unlimited Ink Notary. 
and other signing services that have their own direct business. And when I was a direct notary, the biggest mistake you'll ever make is to turn your nose up at signing services, turn your nose up at general notary work, and to, you know, not try for title. You should have an even balance of where your in, your income is coming from. And Ron is just like that. If you don't let your direct clients know that you have Ron, what platform you're approved from, ask them what platform they need you to be approved for, you're never going to get that business. You have to start letting signing services know that you are Ron, you know, certify or you have your adding Ron to your commission that you, what platform you're working with. Um, if you don't let them know, they're not going to know. And case in point today, Bill said it's by word of mouth. Unlimited Inc. has grown exponentially in the last three years. I just cannot believe we grew today by a new client. Turns out she worked as a processor at one of our larger clients and now is at a new title company in, I think it was St. Petersburg, Florida uh, area. She came on self-signed up today for Unlimited Inc. I gave our traditional onboarding call, asked her how she heard of us, found out it was you know word of mouth. She knew about all the escrow officers using us. And in that conversation, I said, and by the way, if you need to use Ron, she said, oh my God, that's so great. I didn't even think about that part. She would have never known. And we had a lot of clients, you know, about two years ago that were using other companies for Ron. One of them we just rescued back. And we have another presentation on the 15th where we're going and buying for 700 files a month for Ron. 700 files a month for one of you guys would be, you'd be driving Bentleys and living in a, in a Taj Mahal. So I'm telling you, you have to open your mouth. And remember, closed mouths don't get fed. You got to be loud, you got to be proud, and you got to be confident in what you can do, whether it be paper or Ron. Miss um, Anita, you're up next with your question. Hi, thank you for uh, taking my call. Will you please uh, discuss about what we should put on our business cards? I am that type of person that does not really want to put my picture on it. Uh, my business card if I don't have to, but just discuss uh, what we should, uh, what information we should put on our business cards. This is a really personal choice of what you put on your business card, but I'll tell you what I know, and I'd love to hear from anybody else that wants to chime in on this. I always tell notaries that number one, you want to be cohesive with your website and all of your other branding. If you don't want to put your face, that's okay. And I'm just going to be honest. I know that I'm a good looking guy. Okay. I'm not tooting my own horn. I've been told my own life for 43 years. Funny people tell me that, but I feel like I'm ugly. Okay. So I'm not tooting my own horn. I don't like the way I look, but apparently some people do. I know, and I put my photo on business cards because I generally work with people and I want them to remember the good looking guy that walked in in his three piece suit and handed them the card and shook their hand. And I'm proud of my Southern presentation of saying, yes, ma'am. And no, ma'am. And I want them to remember that guy. If you don't like your photo, you don't have to, you can use your logo and you can put that on there, but you do want to have a memorable email address because they may not go back to your card. For instance, my notary email has, and always will be ronnie.notary at gmail.com. It's very easy. When I tried to use Ronnie at Unlimited Ink Notary out in the field, nobody could remember it. They only remember it now because it's a company and it's branded out everything, but they didn't remember that. So I kept it very easy for them to remember a good contact phone number, a phone that you're actually going to pick up. You know, um, those are the two most important pieces. If you have a website, send them to your website. For title and escrow, most title and escrow are not going to go to your website. They don't go to the Unlimited Ink Notary website. They go to our portal to schedule, but they don't generally go to the Unlimited Ink Notary website. You guys more go to the Unlimited Ink Notary website than Title and Escrow. They go to a portal to schedule. So if you have a, 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 a website, mostly the general public and attorneys are going to go there, but not Title and Escrow. They're going to go through portals to schedule or secure emails uh, to communicate with you. A lot of times your websites might even be blocked or title can't get through because it's not added to their whitelist of what they can look at while they're in the office. So you definitely want to have a good contact information. And the last thing that I say is if you don't have a lot of space to fill up with credentials and you can put your logos and things, I love to put something local that people 
fill like on the back of the business card. I love to put something that people will want to look at, whether it be a photo or, uh, uh, you know, if you have a good sports team or uh, a great, like a, we have so many beautiful pictures of the Grand Canyon here in Arizona, um, down in Ocala, Florida on Nancy Fauche's business card. We have this beautiful, she lives in what they call horse country and it's a beautiful horse, you know, coming up in the sunset. Um, it's a, something that people would not want to throw away. So I always try to say, put something very eye-catching that they could familiarize themselves with. And business cards are going to be very local business. It's not like a Ron where you're catering to the entire country. You're catering to a very local area. So get very local and feeling about your city, about your heritage of, of a city, and put something on there that makes people not want to throw it away. Is that helpful in, in guidance? And by the way, this is the perfect time to plug this. I will be doing a resume course uh, on the 30th. It was sent out and said 23rd today. Sorry, Beth tried to that sabotage. Was my problem. Beth tried to sabotage my presentation, but it'll be on the 30th. And I'll be going over what a Stella resume looks like. And we can talk about business cards in that as well. Uh, so I hope you'll come to that on the 30th if you're really thinking about what uh, what you want to put on your business card it can really help you to see that resume course as well. Uh, and that'll be open to anybody that attends live. Replays are only accessible by Notary Star members, uh, but it will be a public event as well. So you guys make sure that you attend that. And Miss Anita, I'd love for you to attend since you're so inquisitive about this. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Mm, righty. Um, how about another jot form question here? I would love that. Um, maybe won't be able to answer this, but this says I am completely mobile. However, my USB port broke on my mobile printer, a $350 repair. So not worth it. Can I run a brother HL L5200 off of a hotspot on my phone or network? Or should I just swap out the printers and use my corded brother HL 2300 instead, and I'm thinking she's saying she can print legal or not sure if she can print legal from that other one, the third, the 2300. Well, the 2300 is a single tray. I think you would have to buy a, another tray for it in order to print uh, legal size from that, or you can split the documents up and print them. My best advice, and I'm going to start this out with not an I told you so, and so I hope it doesn't feel like that, but I've been really pushing for a long time to always buy with our technology that Square Trade, or um, now there's another company doing it. Um, I haven't bought a device in quite a minute, um, but they sell these like warranties at the register or online, and even Amazon does it if you buy it from Amazon. These will save your life, and they're only, you know, 100 bucks or less, depending on what you what you're buying. You always want to buy those so that you can get that warranty. I've used them before and uh, I put them in a safe place where I know how to access them. You can get your device replaced, you know, next day sometimes. The last time I used mine was a printer. It broke down early morning, couldn't print my signings. I was at Staples at nine o'clock and back at home with it set up and running by 930. And I was out on the road, um, didn't miss a beat. Um, and I was very lucky that I had that. And here's the thing. They didn't even ask for the printer back. They said they didn't want it. They just sent me a virtual gift card. I walked right into Staples and bought another one. Um, but with that said, if you're completely mobile and that USB port, USB port broke, I would definitely uh, go with, I don't know if you can do it on Wi-Fi. You have to look at the product specs to see if you can do the 5200 on Wi-Fi. But for the little one, I've used the little one as a mobile printer anyway. For a long time um that exact model uh i don't think you have to have a dual tray in your car but it would be helpful if you get it up to speed once you get your some money back and then learn your lesson from this time if you don't have a square tray on it or a, a firm or whatever they're called now to replace it learn your lesson and when you buy that next piece of technology add that onto it so that you just replace it it doesn't cost you anything Perfect. That was Susan Mack. I don't even know if she's here tonight. We've got 80 participants. Let me check and see if that answered her question. Ms. Mack, did that answer your question or help you at all? Um, 
And I did have a warranty, but it had already expired. So I was kind of SOL. Um, I, I used my little printer, but I didn't know if you could feed legal size in it or not. I haven't tried. So I just hate to be out and think I can print something and then I can't. Um, but the my big printer works on network, so I was I didn't know about a hotspot. You can, and I'll show you these tray pull out here, and this is that printer. Uh, the tray pulls out here, and you'll notice that you can adjust the size of this tray. And I forgive me because I haven't done it in a while. There's a little button inside where you can adjust the size of the tray to make it paper size. And if you push that little button inside again, you can make it. Uh, legal size and they actually, I don't know if you can see this, but there's actually, oh. it says legal and letter in there. And then you can also adjust the size for the paper to keep it steady in there for both sizes. Cool. All right. Thanks. You answered my question then. No. All right. And if you have any problems with it, just FaceTime me. We'll get through it together. Right. Thanks. <laughs> FaceTime me with Ronnie and then uh, YouTube. Mm -hmm. Between those two, it's a sure deal. Yeah. All righty. Um, one more jot form question here. This says, when filling out the notary journal and printing the client's name, should you dot down the address on the ID or the address where the signing is taking place? Keep in mind, people move all the time. So the address is not always accurate on the ID was never clear on this, but I always have to put the address listed on the ID. That's a really great question. And you are actually recording what you see, regardless of whether it's current or not. So if it says their old address, some people, and in some states, you can update your address and your information online with your uh, DMV or your motor vehicle department. They don't necessarily send you a new ID. Case in point, I've got an old address on my ID, right? I updated it um, nine years ago and it's still wrong. They never sent me another one unless I pay to have one sent. So you're recording in your journal precisely what's on that ID. Even if they stop you and say, oh, that's my old address. That's okay. That's the ID you've given me. They've got updated records at the DMV. We're good. Ronnie, what do you think? I will be honest with you. I was reading up on other questions. So I was, okay. you take that one. Yeah. So that's pretty much, you're going to just record what you're, what you see at the time, what's on the ID. All righty. Where do you want to go next? We've got a couple of hands. We have a ton more questions. You guys do really good at sending in those jot form questions. Let's go ahead and take the ones that have their hand raised in case they're uh, trying to ask about something we've already talked about. Um, sure. Terry Young next, who had her hand up for quite a while here. Or oh, his, sorry. I wanted to go back to the question about one person being the credible witness and the witness on a document. I, I would think that you'd want to know what your state rules, regulations, or laws are rather because it could vary state by state. And I know there are some instances where for the notary to be the notary public and the witness on a will or a power of attorney, um, I've gotten advice that says don't do it because it creates a potential vulnerability if the document is ever challenged. Yeah, for sure. You're absolutely right, Terry. On powers of attorney, they specifically list that. that uh, and it'll say it on the front page of almost every power of attorney mm -hmm. if it's received by your signer that way. Sometimes they just download a facing or, you know, the document, leave the facing page, or sometimes it's done by an attorney and they don't give them the uh, instruction page, but every power of attorney, particularly powers of attorney that are associated with health care directives, specifically state that the notary cannot be one of the witnesses. So yeah, you have to know what document you're dealing with, what your state regulations are. And of course, if there's any beneficial interest there, they might 
um, they might be, and it's case by case basis, okay to be a credible witness, but might not be a good idea to use them on the document, depending on whether they're going to receive any beneficial interest or benefit from it, for sure. Yeah, mm -hmm. you're absolutely right, Terry. Personally, I tend to avoid using a relative as a credible witness, just because of the relationship and the potential for conflict to arise down the road. Okay. Case by case, state by state, for sure. But that's always a good practice to be extra cautious. You bet. Yep. All right. Uh, we have one more hand raised there from Yvonne Barber in Arizona. Hi. So my question has to do with the email address you guys spoke about uh, earlier. So when we, it was a few months back, we had to all like update our security and all that stuff. And we had to like get a secure email and blah, 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 and the uh, encrypted. So I got a secure email. It's Yvonne, at Yvonne Notary, blah, blah. And, but I also have my Yvonne Notary at Gmail, which is with every signing service. So my question is, is it worth the time to go in and change that with the NNA and every single signing service to the new one? Or is it okay to leave that one in the background? Like I had to send something to AMRAC uh, um, rock, um, rock. and I had to like scan back mm -hmm. email some scan backs and I used the you know Yvonne notary.com email address mm -hmm. but does having a gmail scream to everybody that you're like new or does it matter does, does anybody ever consider no because and you know unless you want to have you, you know that business name and those sorts of things if you're just doing it a lot of notaries just have you know uh, a right. email. Um, so here's. Does it look point. better to change it? It doesn't not really care. Not really, especially if you're only using that to send secure emails. What I would do is leave what's what is. But I do have to say this: we did find out earlier this year, and especially, oh, well, gotta be careful how I say this. Signing order syncs with the National Notary Association. So whatever email address is on the National Notary Association, they sync with that email address. So if those two emails don't match between signing order and the National Notary Association, you are showing out of date, which means you are going to miss signings. So those two definitely have to be the same exact email address. And coming up in the near future, it's going to be the same for Notary Stars because um, we're syncing with them as well. So your right. email address, whatever you sign up with, if you start changing emails and domains and things like that, you need to pick one and they all need to be uniform. But if you already have them all uniform and you just got one to do uh, secure mm -hmm. emails, I would just use that to send my secure emails. Okay, thank you. That's my question. Is it, okay, does that answer your question pretty straight? Yes, forward? yes, because okay. I was thinking maybe it seems more professional. I get more signings if they know I have like a secure email, blah, blah, blah. But if they're not judging me on the email address, it's fine. Perfect. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you. All right, Miss Beth, are we ready for another job form? We are. Let me ask you answer. Short and sweet here. What's the best way to market to attorneys and estate planning companies? And how do you get past the dragon at the door? All right. Call it gatekeepers. <laughs> so um, I'm going to tell you guys a little secret from my marketing course and this is the only secret you're getting okay if you want the rest of them you've got to come to the marketing course miss brenda i'm also putting in the chat a link to just this section i did a three-part series for my marketing students called direct marketing it is 99 dollars, or you can come to the course for 59 dollars. but here's a secret of walking in the door worked really well for me you trick them stop buying cookies don't drop off stuff it looks unprofessional. We don't buy cookies for anybody because I can't buy you anything unless you give me a paycheck, okay? And I don't expect any of you trying to get business from Unlimited Inc. to bring me cookies because if I don't give you business, you have just wasted 5 to $15 on a brownie, and I'm going to eat it anyway. So you are wasting money. And I am the king of doing this when I was younger. And you know how many people hired me from those cookies? zero not a single one if i could have back all those money for cookies i could take me a nice little cruise for christmas i swear a nice one i could get a stateroom on the top floor 
I will never buy anybody cookies again to get past the gate do doorkeepers. What I will do, though, is trick them. Get yourself a really nice folder that looks like you are applying for a real job. Put yourself together a resume. Come take the resume course that I'm taking that lists all of your assets as a notary and a signing agent and somebody who can do trust. Put together a presentation. Walk through the door and tell that receptionist, I'd like to apply for a job. They don't know what a job you're applying for. You're not soliciting services. You're applying to be a part of their team. Get and, and tell them when they say, oh, well, you know, you can apply online. Say, yes, I'm going to, but you know what? I just like to, I like to be old fashioned and shake hands and drop my resume. I had an escrow officer look at me. She goes, oh, you're a sneaky one. It worked for me every single time to get past that gatekeeper of just saying, you know, I am going to apply online, but I just love to pass my resume. I promise it'll only take a second. Be very confident and have that presentation ready to go, whether you're going for notary business or you're going into an attorney's office to, you know, and, and I'll tell you, when you go to an attorney's office, a lot of those receptionists are worried that you're going to be applying for their job. So if you go into an attorney's office, say, I'm just looking to drop my resume. I'd like to be a member of the legal team. That immediately lets them know you're not there for their receptionist job. Okay, if you go into an escrow team, I'd like to be a part of their escrow team. Don't tell them that you're there just to apply for a job because then they might think that you're applying for their job. And I learned this in Los Angeles, shout out to California, because I was taught my first little day in Los Angeles from, from Georgia. We used to have people to come in the office and they would say, you know, I'd like to apply for a job. And I'd be like, sure, I'll take your resume. And then somebody said, don't you dare, that goes in the trash around here. We don't give the resumes to the boss because we might not have a job later. So um, you, you want to make them feel comfortable that you're not applying for their job and have that presentation ready to go. So easy to do. Um, I actually have them right here. Folders where we use for unlimited ink with our unlimited ink blue. And watch, I'll open it. There won't be anything in it because it's probably, okay, there we go. I have our company resume in here ready to go. Our business card can fit right into this section. I go in, they don't know what's inside this folder. Okay, they don't know that I'm about to sell them signing services when I walk through that door in that three-piece suit with a little humble, I just like to drop off my resume. I'm kind of old school. They don't know what I'm doing. So there's a marketing tip, but I got three to five hours that I just posted in there. Um, and if you if you haven't taken the marketing course, it's in there. It's even cheaper if you go to the marketing course and get the whole shebang. But I'll, I've got that that whole thing. I could talk for hours on how to get past the gatekeepers and how to schmooze people. Um, but that is a part of the course that I know my marketing students will be like, stop giving it away. <laughs> so I got to, you know, not talk so much about that. Okay. One quick comment I do want to make, cause I was in title on escrow for a number of years. Don't discount the person at the front desk in smaller offices. So that person sitting at that desk could be a closer or an escrow officer. And or maybe their receptionist, quote unquote, is on vacation. So never belittle or discount that person sitting at that front desk. They might be just the receptionist. You know how we hate to say just the notary? Mm -hmm. They hate it too. They're not just the receptionist. They might be your best ally to connect you directly to an escrow officer who wants to use your services. I am also glad you said that, Beth, because there is also another reason why you should not discount the receptionist. They might be the branch manager or the attorney because people call in sick. And I know good branch managers that run the front desk, the escrow desk, and everything else in the office when someone is out sick. I have seen it done uh, many times at our clients' offices. You may be walking in, speaking to the branch manager, not knowing it. So you yes. definitely don't want to discount them. And same thing with attorney's offices. Good attorneys will man their own phones because they got to have them picked up just like we do. All righty. No other hands raised at the moment. We do have a couple of hotline questions we might be able to tackle. You want to do that? Yeah. Okay, so get your hands up while we're waiting here. We still have 15 minutes in the program left, so there's still time for we got you. 15 minutes to save the world. There you go. <laughs> this one 
is it okay for me to use a yellow highlighter where the signer needs to sign on a document? It would save time and people are starting to practice that six foot bubble again now that we're in flu and COVID season. I hope everybody on this call knows that's a big no. Nada, don't do it. Don't go anywhere near it with that highlighter. There you go, okay. Next one is for Mr. Ronnie again. How do I set up uh, Google My Business to show the side gigs that I run? You don't. Um, so if you have side gigs that are outside of the notary wheelhouse, of course, if you have Apostille and uh, Officiant and all those things, you can put it in there. Um, but I highly recommend, you know, if you're doing pet sitting, you need to start a pet sitter listing. If you are doing... Um, uh, let's say if you're doing live scan, you need to have a live scan listing. If you are doing anything that's not in the notary wheelhouse, you and it, honestly, I think you should have one for efficient as well. Um, you can have multiple Google My Business listings, but it's not going to benefit you. Google is not going to sit there and parse out to people. Uh, if you have different side hustles, they want very specific information. And the more you disperse that information, the less important your listing becomes. Uh, this is the first principle of a website. You'll hear me talk about this in my marketing course. So Google has already divided and conquered that and says, you know, listings need to be X, Y, Z. They might give you a few facets under that wheelhouse that you can add. But if you have multiple side hustles, you need to find a way to get a listing for those if Google allows that particular category. Perfect. Um, something in the chat. Okay, so we are in tax season, guys. So there's some chat in the chat about um, taxes. One from uh, Douglas that just says, notary fees are not subject to tax, but all other self-employment income is. So let me back up that horse just a little bit. No notary fees are not subject to self-employment tax. You still pay income tax on it. That was... I think backwards in there. Um, but listen, we're not accountants here. We're not tax consultants. We're not CPAs. So you need to make sure you check with whoever puts your taxes together for you at the end of the year to make sure you're getting all of those benefits that you should be getting um, as deductions. I also posted in the chat, if you guys aren't aware, Notary Sys writes a monthly blog for us uh, for tax tips, and they do it in junction with Glen Hill, the tax lady. Uh, they gave a wonderful presentation last year um, uh, for 2023 where they actually uh, addressed that. And I want to pull this up for, for everybody to, I posted all of them uh, in the chat, but um, I want to make sure that it's clear that you have a choice on how you write off your taxes and please go back to that article and that episode that, that I posted in there. Uh, you have your choice because you can write off your notary fees for signings as well. But if you do that, you may be writing yourself out of getting a refund. Um, so there's there's perks. And, and if you're applying for a home or a car or anything in the new year, you may not want to do that or lower your income. So you need to uh, read that article and you know talk to a tax professional when you find file your taxes and don't just file your taxes on what you can save from last year. Think about what you might have to do this year. If your car is getting a little shaky and you're going to have to go buy another car in the next year or two, you may not want to write off some of the things uh, uh, for your income to lower your income. You might need that income to get approved for that car or a new place to live. Um, you know, So think about your future when you're filing your taxes, not just the past or the present. Ms. Laura, you got your hand raised there. Can we get your question while we get prepared for the next job form? Sure. I actually just wanted to give you a shout out because I almost forgot to tell you this. Um, after your, after our marketing meeting on Saturday, I went into my website on Sunday and made just a few little tweaks because I didn't have a lot of time. Um, and I got a call today from somebody named Paulette, who was a brand new notary wanted to know if I was hiring and I, I told her I wasn't because I'm still new at this myself and also my business just opened and all this stuff. I asked her how she found me 
um, she said she Googled notary signing and mine was the first one that came up. <laughs> and this was just after making a few tweaks after our meeting on Saturday. I would love to take credit for that, but anything that <laughs> implemented on Saturday is not because of me, because what okay. I can take several weeks for it to, to come into fruition. Um, boy, that would be the best advertisement ever, <laughs> but I, I don't want to mislead notaries. I'm not a miracle. Okay. There is some work to be done. <laughs> so. Well, I made just a few <laughs> tweaks on Sunday and I was just surprised that it was the first one. She said it was the very first one that came up on, on today when she was looking for somebody to, for help. Perfect. So that made me feel really good. I just wanted you to know that. <laughs> awesome. But keep making those tweaks because it'll it'll get everything better as well. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. Mr. Ronnie, I do know Bill has a hard stop at six o'clock. There is a Ron question in here for him. Do we want to toss that over to him? Absolutely. All righty. Mr. Bill, for you, this says, hello, everyone. I'm wondering if anyone can help with this. I purchased a digital certificate through Ident Trust last year and it's about to expire. I signed up on Blue Notary and they offer a free digital certificate to use with their platform and they sell one I can download. So do you know if I still have to purchase one from Ident Trust? So <laughs> the IdenTrust one, in my experience, is the one that is the most universally used, where if you get it from IdenTrust, you can put it on almost every platform as your certificate. So it's basically you buy one and that's the one that you need. Um, I had an experience when I very first started with Doc Terrify, and the only thing you could get was they didn't tell you you bought their certificate, which was a $99 certificate, but you didn't know, or at least I didn't as a brand new Ron notary, that that certificate only worked on their website and that I couldn't take it somewhere else. So I had to learn kind of the hard way that I could have gone to IdenTrust first and then used it across the board. So that's what I know now, I don't know uh, much about Blue Notary. And if you buy their uh, certificate, if you can export it to use on others, that I'm not sure of. I don't believe. Um, so. I believe you can only use it with them. Yeah, I think it's usually they're they're kind of in house when you buy their certificate. So if you're going to spend the money to buy the certificate, you might as well buy the IdenTrust one that you can use in multiple locations. Because I have a Blue Notary account, and I didn't buy their their certificate I bought, I just used my IdenTrust. Your first, yeah, I would suggest that maybe your first year when you're first getting started with it, you get the one year certificate. Um, then once you know that you're doing it on a regular basis, then you could upgrade to the longer certificate. I think mine's a three year now. They don't offer a four one, a four year one that offer that runs with your. Uh, Bill, do you know if they remind you when that IdenTrust is it going to expire? Uh, yeah, they do. They send you an email. Yeah. Yeah. Did I answer that? <laughs> yeah. I just okay. I wanted to make sure I didn't miss it. Sorry about that. Yeah. So one, I, I would get the idea. I, knowing that you're getting ready to head out the door, one other question that is kind of sort of Ron, um, but it has to do with the passport for a uh, minor child. Um, this we know that a minor child has to be has to go apply in person for a passport in the US but there's an issue with the father being in Australia and he has to sign a consent form um, because he's not going to be present at that appointment do you know if that consent form can be done over run so it's first thing you'd want to figure out is are they going to be able to, are they a U.S. citizen, the parent, the parent, and do they have, um, you know, the, the uh, social so they get through the KVA? If you're in a state that doesn't require KVA and you can do biometrics, then that would be a different story. But since it's just an application, um, I, and not, I, I think that you would be fine with that. Okay, so it's not it the well. application itself. 
It's the uh, parental the, consent. Right, the parental one. That's what I meant. Yeah, so, not the application. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah, usually anything that the embassy, that they would have to go to the embassy for, you can do most of those with Ron. Not all of them. Yeah, I know if it were a regular adult passport um, application, that could be a Ron issue, but that requirement on that uh, minor passport is tricky. So if they will accept it, right? Exactly. Okay. Um. Marty Shelton has her hand up, Mr. Ronnie. Do we want to go there next? Yeah, I wanted to see if we could get the make make sure we get the hands raised before we tune out for tonight. Uh, so yes, let's start with Marty. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I did send a jot, jet jot, whatever it is called. <laughs> um, so I did my website through WordPress. And my host has been site ground since then. And I'm up for renewal and it just spiked so much. I'm wondering if anyone has referrals for web hosting groups that they like and that they would recommend that I can switch to. So your your site is on WordPress? It was made through WordPress and it's being hosted by SiteGround. Okay. Um, have you looked into GoDaddy? Um, I'm looking into GoDaddy and HostGator and Bluehost and Hostinger. Okay, out of all of those, I don't care what anyone says, even if GoDaddy is a few dollars more, it's better. GoDaddy is better, did you say? GoDaddy is, I only use GoDaddy to okay. my there websites. Uh, Wix hosts them, I buy them at GoDaddy, uh, GoDaddy from, buy the domains from GoDaddy. Uh, yeah. I would definitely work with GoDaddy. If you if you're already on that path, I wouldn't even look at any of the other ones. Well, thank you very much. We'll call it short and sweet. <laughs> and I appreciate mm -hmm. that. <laughs> That's awesome. all I needed. Whatever you say, buddy. Awesome. Okay, cool. Give my time to somebody else. Bye. <laughs> and then we have Douglas Gunn coming up to close this out for tonight. You got to unmute there. Can you hear me five by five now? Yeah. Okay, great. Uh, I just want to follow up on both you and uh, and Beth's uh, uh, statements about uh, the uh, self-employment thing. Is that self-employment, the self-employment income, normal self-employment income is all subject to income tax, but the, uh, but the, if it, but the, just the, like the $10 fee that you charge for notary or whatever the fee is in your state, uh, is subject to income, but not self-employment tax. Exactly. Now, you now to follow up what was uh, you were talking about earlier, Ronnie, was the uh, uh, when you have self-employment income, okay, that your income, the part that's subject to Social Security tax, is also how you get credit on your Social Security account for the for that work. You can work work your butt off all year long, but if you had a loss or a net profit of less than four hundred dollars. You go to put your social security statement the following year, it won't be on there because there's no net. Uh, the uh, the self-employment tax is the employers and the employee share of the social security taxes that you normally would pay half of if you're an, if you're an employee of you know for somebody else. And so that's another thing to consider of whether or not to write off all your expenses or not. So yeah. you're saying by claiming <clears throat> the exemption on self-employment tax on the notarial portion of your income you're potentially setting yourself up to be disappointed because you're not going to get <clears throat> enough social security credits. Well, the uh, taking taking the exemption off the tax return isn't so much what does it is if you're if could because on your schedule SE where you put all of your or no your schedule C or or F as the case may be, you put all of your in, your gross income, your and all of your expenses. The difference between that has to be at, at least four hundred dollars profit, net profit. Uh, otherwise, you will not see any credit on your Social Security account because you didn't pay any Social Security taxes. You're not if your net profit is under four hundred dollars, you are not required to pay any any self employment tax. And so, uh, so if you write off all of your expenses where you have a loss, all that work you did that year is great for all other purposes, but it will not. Uh, 
add anything to your social security account. Yeah, exactly. So good to know, guys. Um, just putting a bug in your ear when you go do your taxes, make sure that you understand thoroughly how that's going to impact you um, before you allow your accountant to use that method of deduction for you. And then couple years, last couple of years before I left the IRS, I, that was one of my specialties. So I got really, really dug really deep into it. What an IRS guy in the in the crowd. <laughs> <laughs> I promise I'm gonna pay. Leave me alone. <laughs> uh, no, listen, uh I'm glad that you spoke up about that because one thing that I want to let you know is I'm not a tax professional, nor is Beth, nor is Bill, um, when it comes to taxes. And you, you know, when I file my taxes each year, I go to Brandon Metcalf, who is a tax attorney. Um, you know, I, I do it through a tax attorney. Um, I don't do them myself. I pay him the big bucks to go through and tell me what I need to do. And he does all the talking because at my level, you really need to know what you're doing. Mm -hmm. But if I could go back, because I actually had to refile taxes for when I was a much smaller business, uh, you can go back and refile taxes. So I would say get yourself a really good tax professional and someone who really deals with self-employment. Um, there are different ways that people file taxes. Uh, and if someone's not skilled in filing self-employment, um, you may be missing write-offs that you can write off, or you may not be right. You may be writing off too much. Uh, there may be things affecting your future. So a good tax professional is not just going to take your box of receipts and 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 say, you know, let me file your taxes. They're going to say, okay, here's what our options are. This is how it'll affect you in the future. I didn't know that until I actually got a tax attorney. You know, they they actually ask those types of questions. Uh, and, and that's why we started bringing a notary assistant trying to get that uh, conversation with Glenn Hill, the tax lady, because she does work with people who are self-employed. Um, so make sure you know, you know, you're, when you go to H&R Block, just because it's cheaper, doesn't mean that they are, that person is skilled. Because, you oh, know, if I, if I wanted to become an H&R tax professional mm -hmm. in the next six months, I could. If, uh, I mean, if I, someone comes to me with, the, they, say, they give me, uh, they come in, well, they come in, you know, I do it remotely, but, you know, they say, okay, here are my receipts, and they have this big shoebox, unorganized. They say, okay, well, I'm going to charge you this and this per hour plus the return preparation. So I'll say, let me get back to you. Three days later, they call back, and everything is perfectly organized mm -hmm. all of a sudden. <laughs> yeah. There you go. <laughs> if you want to pay $1,000 for me to do your return, I have no problem with that, but this is what, this is, this is why. <laughs> Yeah. Thank you so much, Mr. Douglas, for uh, putting that in and, and getting our minds in that mind frame. Um, guys, we have reached the top of the hour a little bit past, and I'd love for you to turn on those cameras and put on that smile. If you are having a hard time putting on a smile tonight, I will just let you know I feel like awful. Don't <laughs> let the blue light and the, the filter fool you. I, have, mm -hmm. I had to take a nap before this. Thank God Beth was covering the phones. I'm not feeling well. But I can put on a smile tonight. Anybody can put on a smile. So please turn on those cameras. Let's give each other a little smile, whether we mean it or not. Smile to yourself if you come back and watch the replay. Smile to the future notaries that will be joining us. Wave to everybody. And Miss Beth, how do we say it here at Notary Stars? Well, Ronald Reagan once said, we can't help everyone, but everyone can help someone. So just remember, guys, reach back and grab the hand of that notary behind you or next to you and take them along with you on your journey. Just help them out. Thanks, guys. Good night, everybody.